Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Exciting. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord again. If we can get ourselves together. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And you can stand to your feet. Those of us who can stand. And those of us who are having a little challenge standing by faith. Say, body, stand in the name of Jesus. Body, stand in the name of Jesus. Not being presumptuous. It's just walking by faith and trust in God. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many love Jesus this morning? Amen. I hear in two people. How many love Jesus today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, come on. Let's bless him a little bit. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your divine presence, Lord. We thank you that you are the Lord of our lives, and we declare Jesus as Lord of our lives. You have preeminence in this place today, Lord, and we're excited, Lord, just to be in your presence this morning. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity, the freedom and the liberty that we have in this nation in this country that we can come together we don't have to feel afraid amen we don't have to hide amen we can come boldly before his throne amen amen well praise god amen as we get ready to open up our service today we're going to start as we always do amen with our scripture yes. hallelujah let's say together isaiah 43 and 19 Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, hallelujah. I love that verse. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Well, if you believe it, as the praise team lead us into worship and praise, let's put our hands together and declare to the Lord today that, Lord, we believe your promise. We believe your word. Amen. And we're going to see the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, grace when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that it's gonna get you there. Sometimes 
in the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe in the power of a gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, Come on, do you believe I believe. It? As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. No matter where I go, and no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land. walls I start falling when we fall down on our knees I believe that the lame will go walking and the blind are gonna see I believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to sing I believe I believe I believe and I bow before you Lord
goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. God is so good. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my
Oh, you're so good to us, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can you start that again? Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, we got to give him some more praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Think about where he brought you from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, just think about your life. Hallelujah. Ooh, how good he's been. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. Come on, he never fails. Amen. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will see the goodness.
I'm going to sing of the hallelujah, goodness of the Lord hallelujah. this morning. Hallelujah, you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wordy is the lamb this morning. Wordy, wordy, wordy are you this morning, Father. Thank You're you, good Jesus. God. You're faithful Thank God. You, and that's why we love you this morning. Hallelujah. We love Hallelujah. you this morning, Father, with all our hearts, all our Thank minds, you, all our soul, and all our strength, Woo. God. You're awesome. Thank you, Jesus. You're faithful. You're faithful this morning. How many know that God is faithful this morning? In case you didn't know, he woke you up this morning. In case you weren't sure, he brought you here this morning. He woke you up, amen, as the old time I would say, but my mind stayed on the Lord. He woke me up this morning with the blood running warm in my vein. He is faithful. God, our God is a faithful God. Amen. Let's bless him this morning. Oh, it's so exciting to be in the presence of Jesus. It's so awesome to be in his house. There is no place that I would rather be than to be in his house. Because in his house there is comfort, there is safety. There is healing. There is miracles. In yes, His presence yes, is yes. fullness of joy, beloved. Amen. And at His right hand, there is pleasures forevermore. Or oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. So we welcome you this morning. Thank you, amen, for the amazing job the praise team did in leading us Thank in His presence. They are helpers, amen. amen. And when they lead us, and we follow and we lift up Jesus. God is praised. Amen. Amen. Well, turn around. Amen. Before you see it, turn around to your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you today in the house of the Lord. I'm glad you came. Say, say it to them. I'm glad. Look them straight in the eyes. I'm glad you came. You pressed your way. Amen. And God has something great in store for you. Say it to them. God Hallelujah. has something great in store for you today. Well, praise God. Amen. You may have your seat. Amen. If you can. Well, praise God. Amen. We thank God again for another Sunday. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to be Hallelujah. in the house. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to come together and to bless his name together. Amen. You know, sometimes we can take for granted this liberty that we have in this part of the world. How many of you know that a, a vast part of our world today, folks can come together and gather in his name openly? I've been to some of these places. I know our pastors have. Many places in the world today, folks are sneaking and they're hiding undercover to worship God. Hallelujah. They can't do it in open for fear. We have an opportunity today. We have this blessing, and we thank God for our governmental system, amen, that we are allowed to come together. And for this, we shall give God a hand of praise, because it's only because of His goodness that we're not living there, and we're living here. And to whom much is given, much is required. So we bless God again for you today, amen. We are just excited. It's another Sunday, amen. And we want to welcome everyone into the house today. Amen. Is there anyone that is here for the first time, very first time? If there's anyone, amen. Second time, third time. Oh, yes, Brother Tim, right? Let's just uh, thank God for amen. Brother Tim. Amen. We thank God for you. Uh, he is from our neighborhood. He's not very far from here. Brother, we're just thanking God that God led you here. You told me how the Spirit of the Lord led you to this space. Now, I hold in you to that word, he led you here. You know what that means? That he has a place here for you and a plan and a purpose right here. So we're thanking God in advance of all the amazing things God is going to do through Brother Tim. Amen? Hallelujah. And when we don't see you, remember that seat. Your name is on it. Amen? Nobody else is going to sit on that seat. That's Brother Tim's seat. Hallelujah. And for all our friends, amen, that are watching around the world, amen, this morning, we welcome you into the house of God in our 1030 service, amen, for our friends in Africa, in Nepal, in India, amen, in Asia, in Africa, in South America, in Mexico, in Trinidad, in the Caribbean. We want you to know, amen, that we love you and we're excited that you're tuning with us today, amen. I believe there is a number, amen, for those of you that are looking, um, amen, and the uh, bottom of the screen, it'll, you'll see a a, a toll-free number, and whatever may be happening in your life, a testimony, a praise report, a prayer request, say amen, you can call that number and know that there's someone in the other end of the line that is going to pray with you and encourage you, amen, and believe God with you, and 
God is going to work on your behalf today. Our God is an awesome God. He's a faithful God. He is a good, good father. Yes. And no father would want to harm or hurt or withhold from their children that which is good for them. That's the God we serve. Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, let me get on here with this uh, a little bit of announcements we have. Well, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. As many of you guys know, but if in case you didn't know, our services have been streamed on Facebook, YouTube, and, and of course on the church website. For those tech-savvy folks, amen, you can tune in. If you miss the service during the week, or even if you don't, uh, you want to go back into some old services, teachings and preaching from pastor, you can always go there and you can get those messages, amen. All right, is there anyone celebrating a birthday in the month of January? Or an anniversary? You want to recognize you today. Uh-huh, Sister Teresa? I, I, just Sister Teresa, is that a birthday? A birthday. Anyone else? Birthday. Can you stand, please? We want to we wanna just, you know, celebrate with you. As, amen. Come on, sister. Is it a, bir a birthday? You know... You should be excited to stand up when it's your birthday because you're testifying the Lord has kept me another year. You, you got to look at it like that. Don't see you as getting one, one uh, year older. See you as you're getting closer to see Jesus. Isn't that why we serve him? Hello? At least that's for me. That's how I view it. Amen? Because I really don't like the fact that I'm getting older. But I'm excited because it's closer to me seeing my Lord. Amen. So we have two birthdays. Oh, Brother Hart. Amen. So, oh, anniversary. Awesome. You yeah. care to tell us how many years? Four, nine. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Wow. Now that's, that is awesome. Amen. Well, we're going to just sing happy birthday for the birthday folks, quickly we're going to say, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brother and sister. Happy birthday to you. An anniversary to you. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, again, we're going to remind you, I'm sure everyone knows this, but we have four services on Sunday. 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 5.30. of you looking like, wow, we added four services? We have always had four services on Sunday. 8.30 is our early service. 9.30 is our 5 o'clock. 10.30 is our second service. And 5.30 is our prayer meeting. They are all service. They call them by different names, but they are all service. Amen. Keep that in mind. Amen. We encourage you to come to one or all of these services. On Wednesday night again, we started last Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have awesome studies going on, both for men and for women. The men are currently doing a, a, a session, a video session and book on prayer. And for men, if you haven't been there, Brother Tim, I didn't see you, but the books is available You'd be surprised what we learned yes, Amen. last Wednesday. It, I've heard it so many times, but to hear the brother teaching, prayer, what is prayer? Just a conversation with God, that's all it is. We try to make it so theological and spiritual. Right. It's simply a conversation with God. I encourage you to come, amen, if you're struggling or if you're already a genius in prayer, you can still learn something. And the women, they, I understand they're, they're doing the book of Amos. Amos. It's a book in the Old Testament. It's right there. But if you uh, want to know more, I encourage you yes. to come and study together from the book of Amos. Amen? And invite a friend, amen, a co-worker, a neighbor, a sister, whoever, bring them out. Well, praise God. Well, at this time, amen, if you're able to stand, we're going to stand at this time, and we're going to uh, men, declare our healing declaration. As I said to the ser service earlier this morning, this is not some magical uh, incantation or something that we just wish for, thinking right. that it's going to bring healing. No, no, no. This is just a declaration of what God said in his word. Amen. And throughout scripture, when you read the scripture, you'll see many times how the, the people of God in scripture 
Oftentimes they would rehearse in God's hearing what he already said. It's not like he's forgetful now. Don't think he forgot. But it's just in our relationship with God, that's the way God designed us so that we can go back to God and say, God, you said this. And I'm trusting you and I believe. Because why? Because you, you're not a man that you should lie. And you're faithful, God. So when we, when we declare the healing declaration, it's just in, in our own words, we are declaring to God what he said. And we're trusting and believing him for miracles. So if you need a healing today, if you have a loved one or someone, amen, just envision them as you declare this today. Let's say to uh, declare together. I declare by the stripe of Jesus that I am healed. He took my sickness. He carried my pain. I believe it is the will of God for me to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and premature death of my body. I declare that none of these things exist in my heavenly Father. I declare in the name of Jesus that every sickness, hidden disease, infections, or pain in my body was paid for the cross, and I am healed today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. While you're standing, we're also going to declare, amen, our, our, our tithes and offering declaration. And it's along the same, same uh, line, amen. It's not some, you know, miracle uh, chant we chant in here. It's, again, it's, it's the promises of God when we, when we declare what God says about tithes and offering. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking the gear. Bringing all the tithes into the soul that it may meet in my house. That's the good part. But the other, even better part, and I will rebuke the devil for your sake, said the Lord. Amen. And that's what we declare. Let's say together. Oh God, today we believe you for an open heaven. Unlock storehouses, miracles, visitations, and divine manifestations. We join our faith and trust in your word. By returning the tithe and sowing seed offerings into your kingdom. By doing so, we know that you've rebuked the devil in our lives. Rain down on us and water our seed in favor, blessings, and increase. In the name of Jesus, amen. For those of you who bring your offering up and tithes, amen, you can do so. And while you're doing that, I just wanted to say, amen. I don't know if you realize the Amen. The impact that this church, Abundant Life Church, and your giving is doing for the kingdom of God. I want to just tell you and share with you, amen, across the world, this tiny little congregation here in Abundant Life Church in Garland, Texas, is making a momentous impact around the world. In Africa, in Nepal, in India, in Mexico, in South America, all over the world. This little church, the way you've given and Continue to give. It's having a great impact. So God bless you for that. Amen. Praise God. Well, at this time, hallelujah. I guess we're going to bring up our beloved pastor. Aren't you so happy to see pastor today? Let's stretch out our hand to him. Amen. And say, Lord, strengthen our pastor today. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our pastor today. Amen. You may be seated. I know God has a great word for us today. Amen. Thank you, Brother Byron. Thank you, Pastor. Be seated. Thank all of you for being here, and uh, thank you for your prayers for me. They are working, and uh, I'm so grateful to God. I'm standing here by faith today and in faith because we are, we are, more, we are stronger in our faith when you, when you look at things when they are at their worst and you say to them, by this time tomorrow, and that's what I've come to declare today, that it's going to thunder, amen, and there is going to be a glorious intervention of God's grace and blessings in our lives, amen, amen. Thank all of you for everything that, that uh, you do for the kingdom. Uh, <clears throat> certainly, uh, I am getting better. Uh, I am still unable to sit, uh, so I've been standing since 6 o'clock this morning uh, without sitting down, so uh, I can lie down without much pain, I can walk without much pain with the back braces that they have me in, but uh, today I'm coming to this house, stand before you to declare healing in my body, Amen. hallelujah, and uh, deliverance in my body. 
Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Uh, last week, of course, uh, Brother Abraham and Brother James Beavers uh, did such an incredible job. Brother, By Brother Byron was <laughs> Brother Byron did a great job this morning. Brother Barry and the and the praise team last Sunday. All of our streaming and sound and greeters and Sunday school and ushers and just every part of this congregation, my goodness, you are amazing. You are amazing, and uh, I can't thank God enough for you. Praise God. Good to see all of you, and uh, thank you for being here. And uh, Brother Tim, I haven't got to meet you yet, my good brother, but I'm so honored that you are here. And uh, Brother Matthew, it's good to see you all, and we're so excited about Brother Matthew and uh, <clears throat> Sister Caris and their, their family are going to become part of our church and so as and they're gonna be our new members here today and we're excited about that their precious daughter amen amen praise God the the Lord spoke uh, in October as God gave me uh, those four Christmas messages and the words that God gave me for the beginning of the new year the reason I know that this is an attack from the devil this is an attack of the enemy. This is not just, I didn't do anything. It's not like I went out and did something out, you know, that I normally wouldn't do. I didn't pick up anything. I wasn't uh, bent over. I, I was got in my car from being in town, sat down in my car, fastened my seatbelt, and like uh, instantly, I was almost paralyzed. With such pain, I couldn't walk. Uh, had I could not stand up straight for three days till I was able to get to Dr. Drone's office. Uh, I know this has been an attack of the enemy. But that's why I'm here today. Because this is an attack of God back to the enemy. Hallelujah. So you're being here today. We are on the attack. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to throw this off. In Jesus' name. Now, here's the word. Of the Lord. Second Kings chapter 7, beginning at verse 5. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I had worked so hard the last couple of weeks building a set of slides with all of all of the thunder and all the, everything on the slides went right off and forgot them this morning on my jump drive. And so Robin took my notes, bless her heart, before the 8:30 service, and she laboriously typed, hand typed every one of these in the computer for me, everything that you're going to see today. So thank you. So very much, Robin. I appreciate it. Amen. So much. And I got my trusty, Bob and Jeannie, I got my trusty pointer. Thank you. <laughs> now, the four lepers rose up in the twilight. This is such a prophetic word it is just dripping with God's promises first of all four lepers representing a remnant of the city twilight representing the timing we are in the twilight of the closing of a dispensation rose up in the twilight Think of this. Where would the remnant church go in the twilight in the evening time? The last thing you would think of would be the enemy's camp. But think about it. Everything that we need, all your family's health there, all, your, all the captivity... Everything that we want is in the enemy's camp. These four remnant lepers, remnant of the city. The city has been besieged now for months by 100,000 Syrian soldiers. Nobody's come in, nobody's gone out. The food has all been eaten up. The Bible said that by now the, inside the city they are eating donkey heads and pigeon dung. There is no food. All the horses 
have been slaughtered by the king. That's kept what few army officers that, that are left alive. They are in a dire situation. It is a collapsing of society. It is a collapsing of the political structures. It is a collapsing of the of the religious so-called lukewarm church. It is the collapsing and the death of everything that the world has told us was important, tried to tell us that we had to bow down to, and now that is lying inside the walls of a city nearly in ruin. And so they got up to go into the camp of the Syrians. There was 100,000 soldiers there. But when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. God, what a miracle, what a glorious thing. They expected 100,000 soldiers. They expected 100,000 swords and shields. They expected all of that to, be, to greet them, perhaps to destroy them, or they would become prisoners by them. But when they got there, there was not 100,000 or not even 100. The Bible said there was no man. There, there was no man there. Why? For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. A noise, first of all, of, of chariots. And then a noise of horses. Even the noise of a great host. And they, the enemy, said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. And here's what they did. They left behind their tents, all their horses, all their donkeys, and the camp as it was and fled for their lives. 1 Samuel 7.10 And then Samuel, the prophet, here's the prophet. We need a prophetic word. Was offering up the burnt offerings. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered. With a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. Now, I want to talk about, you can go and put this up, Robin. I'm going to talk about a season of thunder. A season. I'm not talking about a thunder clap. I'm not talking about a, a thunderstorm. I'm not talking about rain. I'm talking about a period of time when God himself will orchestrate everything in the universe till it's time for his thunder. I want to say thank you to Javier and Ina Tiarina. They continue to amaze me, but I asked for some clouds, and but look at this. Amazing, isn't it? Yep. I want to stand under them. I'm asking the Holy Ghost today that when we leave, not these physical clouds, but I'm asking the Holy Ghost to let a cloud of the glory of God go over your head and follow you everywhere you go this week, in your house, in your job, with your children. Hallelujah, everywhere you go, 
I'm asking God to let your enemies, uh, I'm asking God to let our enemies hear the thunder. Hear the thunder of the Lord. Now the Lord said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we know it well, that there is a time and there's a season under the heaven for everything. You remember that he said a time to weep, a time to rejoice, a time to, 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 to plant, a time to, to, to harvest, a time to pluck up. See, there's a, it's seasons because God worked with seasons. We are familiar with the four seasons that come and go each year. God promised in his word that as long as the earth stood, that times, seasons, and harvests would exist until the earth is no more. So no matter what is happening in the world or in your world or mine, seasons will roll around. Hallelujah. Right now all the beautiful leaves are gone. But there's a day coming just a few days from now. The sun's going to come out and the warmth of that sun's going to bring resurrection to every plant, hallelujah, seasons, revival, season of revival, and the earth will come. Amen. That These four seasons, he said, they're, they're going to come faithfully as long as time stands. Now, there are many seasons mentioned in Scripture. Among them, of course, is due season. That's when things come due. I preached about that just recently. There's some things about to come due in your life. There's some things about to come due in your family. There's some, whoo, there's some blessings that, that the devil has tried his best, uh, amen, to disrupt and dislodge. Uh, but I'm about to tell you, uh, there is going to be, uh, amen, a harvest uh, breaking through. Uh, hallelujah. God, the enemy, is not going to take your harvest. There are many more. There's, there's the season of harvest and the season of latter rain. There's the seasons of the feast of the Lord. But I believe in 2024 we're going to see the feast of season of thunder. Now this is a little rabbit trail story. Don't anybody let me forget where I'm at. But I just thought about it when I was talking about the enemy cannot steal your harvest. Of course, you know my dad was a pastor. He was also an incredible farmer. He raised uh, farmland. He raised cattle, and we had all kind of livestock, including chickens. My father raised our own chickens. Uh, he would set the eggs under the hens, as you would you would know, and the hens would set on the eggs until they hatched, and and the little baby chicks would be born. And uh, this was this event I'm going to tell you about happened. Uh, I remember it was a thorn, thunderstorming night. It was raining and the lightning was flashing. And uh, my daddy, somehow, we heard the squawking in the hen house where, where the hens were, were sitting on eggs. And my daddy got out and uh, took his gun with him and got out there. And there was a big old chicken snake that had come up under the hen. She's still on the eggs. The chicken snake is swallowing eggs. He swallowed at least two of them. My daddy kills the snake, shoots it in the head, takes his pocket knife, and gently cuts open this snake. This sounds pretty gross, unless you're from Louisiana where I'm from this we do this all the time open that snake up because the eggs are not crushed yet because in order to crush the eggs they got to roll around something and then squeeze it took those two eggs unharmed out of the belly of that snake put them back under that hen and they hatched in other words God daddy said no 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 you're not taking my harvest no no those are those, those chicken legs belong to my boy 
<laughs> I'm going to fry those chicken legs someday. You're not taking my food. You're not taking my blessing. I've come to tell the devil today, you're not going to take our blessing. You're not going to take our harvest. No, 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 no. Greater is he that is in you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, God gives us the blueprint for what happens in a season of thunder. Get ready. God's people were besieged by the Syrians until there was nothing hardly left. They were barely surviving. Several people had died in the city from starvation. Their children were weakened. Their families were weakened. Their homes, people were about to give up on life. It was, a, it was the worst of the worst of times for the people of God in that hour. Much like what we've gone through the last few years in America and the world. Much like what your family's gone through. Much like what my family's gone through and our family's gone through. Until one man stood up. A prophet. And he just, it just takes one. Thank you, Pastor Carolyn. It just takes one word. It just takes one woman, one man of God. I want to tell you something. He stands up and looks at what he looks. It takes guts. It takes courage. And it takes faith to look at what he saw. And hear the wails and the cries of children starving for food. Raise his voice and say this. By this time tomorrow, in this very country and in this very city and nation, you can buy all the foods you want for just a few pennies. Because we are, our faith is strongest when we can, in our worst of times, uh, look at our situation and say, by this time tomorrow. In other words, I got news for you. This is not going to last. Uh, your situation is not going to last. Uh, amen. America's situation is not going to last. Uh, by this time tomorrow, there's going to be some changes. Uh, there's going to be some changes. A man stood up with a prophetic word that looked and sounded impossible. As a matter of fact, the king and all of the government and all the people in the military and all the politicians stood up and said this. If this, the only way this could happen, God himself would have to open up the windows of heaven and rain it down. And, of course, he did. I believe that the Lord is saying to us, be aware of the unusual, get ready for the unusual, get ready to see what you've never seen. <laughs> I'm going down to the enemy's camp. I'm going to take back. I'm going to take back. Come on. Somebody wrote a song that we're going down to the enemy's camp. I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. I'm going down to the enemy's camp. You talk about unusual. There should have been 100,000 soldiers greet them. Not one man. Not one man. Not one man of the enemy. Come on. They not Listen, not one... Listen, they didn't send part of them all, but keep part of them there. Not one man of the end. Everybody was gone. Not one man. Everybody say, not one. Not one man. I want you to say to the devil, that not one man. Amen. Not one woman. Not one of our children. Not one. Come on. Not one. You get, you're not getting anything. Because God thundered, and there was a tipping point. This is, i got to get this out somehow. There was a tipping point in the sounds that the enemy heard in that hour. 
This did not happen in months, days and weeks and hours. This happened in just a few moments. As long as it took for these four crippled remnant bunch of lepers to walk from the city gate wall to the camp, God worked his miracle in those moments. Something else I want you to understand, that when these sounds started, they were not heard in Elisha didn't hear it. It was not heard in the king's house. The politicians didn't hear it. None of the news media heard it. The four lepers, the, the remnant, didn't hear it. So don't you worry about trying to hear something right now. You just keep right on walking toward the enemy's camp. I said, you don't have to worry about trying to hear something right now. You just keep on walking. Uh, You just keep on walking toward the enemy's camp. Because the Bible said that God caused the enemy to hear. I'm getting way ahead of the message, but just let me go ahead and say this. God at this point had stopped communicating with the, with the politicians. He wasn't communicating with the leaders of nations. Now he's not talking to the generals in the military. He's not holding news conferences. Come on. With the news media. He, he's about to communicate directly with the enemy. He's, he's going to bypass everything else. When God said to us years ago in this church in a word of prophetic word that came out of this church, God spoke it out out of my mouth. I'll never forget it. God said uh, the day will come in this church uh, and the day will come in the body of Christ uh, that the church will no longer have to announce me, saith the Lord, uh, for I will announce myself, saith the Lord God. I'm telling you, amen, we are at a tipping point. This is not just history. This is not just history I'm talking about. This is not just history. I'm talking about a tipping point in prayer. I'm talking about a tipping point in worship. I'm talking about a tipping point in the prophetic word. The sounds are going to stack up, stack up, stack up. Until there's going to be a tipping point. The the enemy first heard something that sounded like chariots. And they're thinking, where in the world would that scraggly, raggly group get chariots? And so they're listening a little bit. Chariots. Loud chariots. But nobody heard of the chariots but them. And then God said, you know what? I need some horses. Now, so he, he added the noise of horses. And they're listening. Scripture said they're listening to the sound of chariots and horses. You see, your, your body is listening to the sound of chariots and horses. But you're about to hear, you're about to hear something else. But so the tipping point happened is when the Lord sent the sound of a great host. Now we understand in Scripture that always the great host in the scripture is always angelic. So God added to the earth sounds a heavenly sound, Jeannie. Oh, that sound in the top of the mulberry tree. What I think happened is there must have been about a quadrillion angels flying over somewhere, kind of like F-16s. And God said, would y'all just kind of fly low? Over the camp. <laughs> Would y'all just kind of dip down and fly low over the camp of the Assyrians? And when that, my Lord, that sound was not man made, it was heaven made. Mm. <laughs> and the Bible said, when they heard that, <laughs> They said, we have heard enough. We don't have to hear. 
We don't, we don't have to do anything else. Amen. And, and I want you to know, they, they didn't take time to pack up everything. The Bible said when they heard that sound, that's why they left the way they left and left everything. Listen, there was about 20,000 or 30,000 people in, in Samaria and behind, and behind that wall. There's enough food to supply the needs for 100,000 in the camp. The tipping point, the tip, everybody said the tipping point. The tipping point for your healing, the tipping point for your deliverance, the tipping point, amen, for your children to be set free, the tipping point of the blessings of God. Hallelujah. It's going to sound like thunder. It's going to sound like chariots. It's going to sound like horses. It's going to sound like angels. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. They left the camp, even as it was, fully operational, well-stocked for the long term and capable of maintaining 100,000 soldiers. I preached a message a few years ago. We had gone through so much from the nation from COVID, and we had lost so many people had went to be with the Lord, and Almost every, almost every family that we knew about had lost someone, including I, my family and Mr. Davis's family, and we'd all been through some stuff, and our nation and people we knew. God gave me this word. He said, you've heard from hell. You've heard from hell, but you're about to hear from heaven. I preached that, I don't know when... The date was, but I'm going to release that word again. God's about to thunder because the season of thunder. You see, all these clouds up here. You see, don't think for a minute, don't think for a minute that what's going on in this world, it's just happening. No, no, no. The, no, God is gathering. All, listen, what's happening in Washington, D.C., what's happening in the United States of America, What's happening in, in Israel? What's happening, amen, in, in, in India and Pakistan? What's happening in, in Iran? What's taking place in Israel? What's taking place in Russia and Syria are clouds that God is bringing together. Don't you think for a moment that any of this has caught God off guard or that he's no longer in control? I want you to know right now, these nations, the Bible says, God has put a hook in their jaw. And he is drawing them, uh, amen, uh, toward a moment of thunder and the power of God. Uh, hallelujah. I'm asking God, let us stay under these. Let us stay under the, let us stay under the cloud of your glory. Uh, God, uh, let us stay under the cloud of your uh, prayer. Uh, let us stay under the, pra- under the cloud of the prophetic. Uh, let us stay under the cloud uh, of the word of God. Uh, let us stay under the cloud of worship. Let us stay under the cloud of worship. Because we're about to, our nation is about to hear from heaven. Don't write America off yet. The church is about to hear from heaven. And the enemy is about to say, we've heard enough. You don't have to take that anointing oil out anymore. You don't have to quote me one more verse. All those times you declared the declaration, I'm out of here. (laughs) <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm packing up. I'm packing up out of your body, and I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Everything I, I thought I was going to steal from you, I'm leaving it. I'm, I'm not taking anything. Hallelujah. I'm not taking your health. I'm not taking your mind. I'm not taking your strength. I'm not taking your finances. I'm not taking your family. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here because I have heard enough. I have heard the thunder. It will thunder in your situation. So keep on believing. Keep on praising. Keep on just knowing our bodies, our families, our finances, our promises. We'll hear the, the thunder of God. Because God, at that point, no longer communicates 
with anyone but the enemy. Uh, when God quits talking and gets to go silent on the stage, just know something. Something's going on in the enemy's camp. The scripture said only the enemy heard the sound of thunder. Let me close with this. And musicians come, Pastor Carolyn. 2 Samuel chapter 22. 14 and 15. The Lord thundered from heaven. And the Most High the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning, and discomfited them. Discomfited them. That's another word, way of saying he put their bodies out of joint. He disjointed them. Every joint in their body went out, and they couldn't hold on to a weapon. They couldn't. They could. They could hardly walk. He disconfitted them. They were unable to even fight. Had they even wanted to fight, their weapons wouldn't even stay in their hands. We're about to see God disconfit some things in America. We're about to see God disjoint, dis politically, militarily, spiritually, and in every way, God is about to disconfit the enemy. Amen. Next verse. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. And the highest gave his voice, and when he did, hailstones and coals of fire fell on the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. Thou shalt be visited by the Lord of hosts with thunder, earthquake, and a great noise, and storm, and tempest, and a flame, devouring fire. All of these, some of these were historic. Some of them are about to happen now, but I want to res I reserve just one. There's another one in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, and verse 2. Now, this is going to happen after the rapture of the church. This is going to happen after God takes his people out of the earth and the judgments of God are poured out upon this earth. The Antichrist will be destroyed. Lucifer, I'm teaching about the destruction of Lucifer in the 930 class because I'm in the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah is the prophetic word of God 720 years before Jesus was born. How God would destroy Lucifer is pretty amazing. It's dramatic. And during that same time, here's what God said. John is writing this down. He said, I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. Now, we know the voice of many waters, many places in the, in the book of Revelation, refers to the, sound, the singing of the angels. Their voices, their sound, the sound of many waters. We also know that there were voices of harpers, musicians, all the musicians, all of heaven's musicians that are gathered, all the guitar players and all the, all the saxophone players and harmonica players and all the organ players and all the keyboard players, all the harps going to be harping with their harps. And the scripture said, in that day, there will be the sound of thunder heard on this earth and it will absolutely be so dramatic and dynamic that it will get the attention of the whole world. The whole world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I... Please help us today. 
this word is it's a word that it's a prophetic word connected to our present and connected to our future and I have done my best to release it the way you gave it to me but I don't have to hear the sound of the thunder we may we may hear some of it I don't know but Lord I do know this that our enemy sin, sickness, disease the antichrist spirit in this world is about to hear the thunder of heaven hallelujah oh Jesus Lord you spoke to us that there's going to be shakings going on 2024 and beyond everything that couldn't be shaken will be shaken you you said in your word so that that which cannot be shaken may remain that's us that's your remnant hallelujah we thank you because we know that while you're shaking the world you're you're going to bless and protect the church just like you did when Israel was in Egypt and all the plagues affected Egypt but it did not affect the land that Israel inhabited Lord we thank you today for our children coming home children being born sons and daughters returning to the house of God not just abundant life church God but Lord there are churches by the thousands across America and around the world and we are preparing for the enemy to release everyone and so we say today Lord to the north and we speak to the south and to the east and to the west give up and may you hear the sound of the thunder of my God in Jesus name let's stand together hallelujah hallelujah let's praise him today hallelujah Jesus I worship you I worship your name Father Of Jesus, the wash is white as snow. I believe in the power of a gospel, still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord. We fall down on our knees. I believe that the lame will go walking and the blind are gonna see. I believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to sing. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord. start falling when we fall down on our knees i believe that the lame will 
people walking in the blind they're gonna see I believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to sing I believe I believe I believe as I bow before you Lord
Hallelujah. As we wrap up our service this morning, is there anyone here this morning that may not know the Lord? We want to give you an opportunity today. Amen. Those of you that are listening to the service online, if you don't know Jesus this morning, and you know, let a man examine himself. Make sure that you know, that you know that you know that your life is right with God. The greatest of all miracles is the miracle of salvation. And that's what Jesus came to do. The Bible says, Amen. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And that work, Amen, that the chief work is so that we can have salvation. But salvation is not just to be saved now. The word salvation is salvation from sin and all of its consequences. But the first thing is to be saved. So is there anyone today? Everyone? Is there anyone that may not need us to pray before we dismiss? Amen. Amen. Maybe there is something going on in your life and you like us to pray. The elders can pray with you today. Does anyone need a miracle? Want us to believe God with you? We want to give you an opportunity. Well, all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. For those who are watching, amen, uh, online, if you need Jesus, I'm going to pray this prayer. Just, amen, for those who may be watching. Amen. Let's, uh, let's trust the Lord and let's believe together. Say, say with me today. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm so thankful that you sent Jesus to down the cross for me. He took my place on the cross. He, amen, died on the cross and shed his blood so that I can have forgiveness of sin. Today I receive that forgiveness. By faith, amen, I receive that forgiveness. I purpose in my heart from this day that I am going to live for Jesus and I'm going to serve Jesus all the days of my life. Thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit to come and live in me, empowering me and enabling me to live a life that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you pray that prayer, amen, call us and let us know, amen, so we can rejoice with you and, and get you some material in your hands so that you can grow in your faith. Well, we thank God again for you today coming out and pressing your way, amen. If you can, make it to this evening at 5.30 is our prayer service. Amen. If you don't have any need, amen, you are just a special person. But amen for all the rest of us who have needs. Come here if you know a friend, some co-worker that is needing a miracle. Let's bring them before the Lord. Well, at this time, amen, we'll look to the Lord. Father, thank you again for this amazing word that you spoke to our pastor. We want to thank you how you strengthened him and he was able to stand here and to declare Thus said the Lord. May we go with this word this week, Father. May this word from the Lord resonate in our heart. God reminding us in whatever situation we may find ourselves this week, Lord, that the Lord will utter his voice like a thunder. And my God, that the enemy will flee at the song of that thunder. I bless your name for favor, divine favor going with us this week, Lord, that you're going to make a ways for us, Lord, and doors going to be open for us, and you will Keep us safe on the roadways, Lord. Give us traveling mercy in my faith, Lord. Thank you for bringing us back in the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, greet someone and tell them how much you love them, and we'll see you guys. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Glenn Davis. We are located at 1717 Castle Drive here in the great city of Garland, Texas, and I want to personally thank all of you for watching our telecast today. It's our prayer that the word of the Lord and the worship of God in this house today was a true blessing to you. We encourage you to respond to the word of the Lord. Amen. God is moving. God is doing some great things. Revival is began to break out in America right now and around the world. And there's a spirit of revival in the church here at Abundant Life. And we are thrilled. We are praying uh, daily for the revival. We're praying daily over you. And if you have a special prayer need, there is a number you can call. And we'll be honored to pray with you and for you. Amen. So don't forget, you can see this telecast every week at the same time. Before we go today, I want to just pray over you. Uh, usually we pray, ask you to maybe to pray the prayer of a sinner to, 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 say, to be saved. But today I want to just pray for you. Lord, I just, I bless everyone that's watching today. I ask you right now to touch every heart. 
touch every life, touch every family. Lord, move today by your spirit. To, you know those that are hurting. You know those that are sick. You know those that are going through struggles with addiction, those that are going through situations in their family and with their children. So right now, I release the word of the Lord to be healed, blessed, and delivered in whatever area of your life your need may be. So in Jesus' name, be healed today. In Jesus' name, be saved today. In Jesus' name, be delivered today. And again, thank you for watching our telecast. Don't forget, you can see us again at the same time next week. And until then, this is Pastor Glenn Davis saying, God bless you all.